Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Um, I did a video on uh, insomnia last week uh, and I've had quite a few comments, uh, I've had quite a bit of feedback about that. Uh, and one of the things that um, has been mentioned is that I didn't talk about the effects of caffeine. Um, now that seemed quite obvious as caffeine is obviously a stimulant and can, um, it is known to be able to keep you awake. Uh, now the reason I didn't cover caffeine in that video is because I thought that if I did uh, it might uh, become too in depth and therefore it might take away from some of the other uh, recommendations that I'd made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover quickly uh, today uh, the effects of caffeine on wakefulness uh, and then hopefully uh, these two videos together uh, will cover most of the nutritional strategies uh, surrounding insomnia. Um, now caffeine is a stimulant. Um, in order to be able to understand how caffeine works, uh, we need to understand a bit about neurochemistry. Um, now it's very important to understand that neurochemistry um, is very difficult to understand. Um, many studies obviously look at neurochem neurochemistry, uh, but our understanding of the brain is not good. Um, so a lot of this, um, the evidence that we have surrounding caffeine, um, is, is open to interpretation and therefore uh, that caveat always needs to be uh, mentioned before talking about caffeine and its effects. Um, caffeine is a is an adenosine antagonist uh, and in order to be able to understand how it has an effect on sleep uh, you need to understand a little bit about the adenosine receptor. Um, there are four subgroups of adenosine receptor uh, the ones that we're really interested in in terms of caffeine uh, are the adenosine 1 and the adenosine 2 alpha receptors. Uh, these are the two receptors that appear to be involved in sleep uh, and these are the two that are uh, particularly uh, involved in interacting with caffeine. Um, now uh, adenosine is a neurotransmitter that's released uh, from our central nervous systems. Uh, when we wake up we have low levels of adenosine and then during the day uh, levels of adenosine increase. As the levels of adenosine increase, the adenosine locks onto the adenosine receptor. This uh, activates the receptor, uh, and in response, the the, the uh, receptor causes an inhibition of um, a neuronal activity in the brain. So, adenosine uh, is an inhibit generally an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Now, that's not that's not uh, to say that all adenosine receptors are, and adenosine is always an inhibitory neurotransmitter, but we take it as a generalization that adenosine uh, is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. It does have some excitatory uh, effects, but on the whole, adenosine will decrease neuronal activity in the brain. So, what happens is as we as we go through the day, our levels of adenosine increase, our activation of the adenosine receptor increases uh, concomitantly uh, and as a result uh, our neuronal activity starts to slow we start to have an, inhib an inhibition of excitatory neurotrans uh, neurotransmitter release uh, and this gradually causes us to become more sleepy um, the amount of time it takes for us to get sleepy is dependent on the person and genetics and there are other factors involved as well for example how much sleep we've had in the past but generally uh, as we go throughout the day our levels of adenosine rise and that causes us gradually to become more sleepy as the activation of the adenosine receptor causes inhibition of our other neuronal activity. Now where caffeine comes into this is that caffeine is, a, is an adenosine antagonist. Uh, caffeine blocks the adenosine receptor and this um, increases the duration that we can stay awake and alert uh, because we don't uh, reach the point where our neuronal activity has been inhibited uh, at the same time point. We actually reach it, reach it at a later, later stage. Um, so by blocking the adenosine receptor, this normal ability of adenosine to cause inhibition of our neuronal activity is diminished and therefore caffeine keeps us alert and awake. Um, that's all well and good, but there are some interesting nuances that you have to understand about caffeine. Um, Caffeine uh, is a it's a it's, it's a drug that's in many many foods. It's very difficult to avoid caffeine, um, and there are other methylxanthines that have similar effect as well. Um, now there are there are for example this theobromine is another common dietary methylxanthine, and this theophylline which is in tea as well. Um, these methylxanthines as a whole, caffeine is the most commonly consumed, uh, and caffeine has been the most extensively researched. But they all have a similar effect. 
Um, and it's very difficult to invo avoid caffeine in your diet. Most people drink tea or coffee. Uh, it's also in cola, it's also in cocoa. Uh, it would therefore be in chocolate as well. Um, so most people get some caffeine. Now, this is interesting because caffeine, uh, generally those people who consume caffeine regularly, um, they become used to its effects. Uh, there's a there's a certain habituation that occurs, and those people that who regularly consume caffeine actually uh, feel less of the effects of caffeine than those people uh, who abs who are abstainers. Um, now, this this is where uh, it becomes difficult to interpret the effects of caffeine in terms of sleep. Um, it's possible to drink those people that drink lots and lots of tea and coffee. It's possible for them to consume coffee and tea late at night and still be able to get a good night's sleep because um, they're used to its effects. And this is to do with the, uh, the result that as you consume more and more caffeine, uh, its effects on the adenosine receptor diminish and therefore it's less able to block the effects of adenosine uh, in the body. So we have to be very careful because if we look at a study that says that caffeine increases alertness, that's true. But we have to always take into account the type of person that that study has been performed on. If they are regular caffeine consumers uh, or they are uh, abstainers from caffeine, there, there may be different effects in the results of that study. Um, and this is the this is the reason why uh, many people, for example, can have a cup of hot cocoa before they go to bed and they can sleep perfectly well, uh, whereas others would uh, would actually find that that would stimulate them uh, and that would actually prevent them from sleeping. Uh, if you don't regularly consume uh, caffeine and you have caffeine late at night, it may well stop you sleeping. If you are a regular caffeine consumer and you have caffeine late at night, you may not have any effect from it. Uh, and this will also come down to genetics as well, how quickly you metabolize the caffeine and also what else you consume with it. Cocoa uh, is a common drink uh, that is taken before bedtime. Uh, and of course, cocoa contains hot milk and hot milk uh, is is is, is probably uh, the reason why cocoa actually induces sleep in people uh, so even though there are methylxanthines in the cocoa uh, the hot milk is able to actually induce sleep so caffeine is a very a very difficult um, topic to be able to come to any kind of conclusions uh, the only thing I can really say is that if you are sensitive to caffeine if you find that drinking caffeine uh, in the evening does stop you sleeping I would avoid uh, avoid trying to con uh, avoid any foods that contain any of the methyls and things and of course that doesn't necessarily just mean tea or coffee that can mean you know chocolate or uh, cocoa or any of the other foods that could contain methyls and things like cola um, they need to be avoided in order to be able to help you get a good night's sleep uh, however, I can't give that recommendation to everyone because there are certainly uh, many people that can drink a cup of tea late at night and still have a good night's sleep. So I think this is one of those situations where you really have to do uh, you have to do your own research uh, based on your own biochemistry. Um, if you are finding it difficult to sleep but you're not sure of the effects of why that is, um, obviously avoiding caffeine is 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 a good place to start. Um, but there are other things that you need to do as well, such as avoiding stress uh, and also uh, looking at your amount of physical activity. Make sure you're performing moderate amounts of physical activity. Um, if you, if the it, if you find that uh, caffeine is particularly problematic, then obviously I would recommend you uh, avoid it. But if you if you find that there is no real effect from withdrawing caffeine from your diet, uh, we have to remember that caffeine is also along uh, is also present in many foods that actually have health benefits. Um, I would suggest that tea, of all the foods that you could actually uh, go and look at into the nutritional research, of all the foods that you could take, tea is probably the food that has the most evidence supporting its health benefits uh, and probably has the best health benefits so avoiding tea uh, is not a good idea unless you really have to I would always suggest that people do drink tea particularly green tea uh, it is a very healthy food so this is something you're going to have to research yourself this is something that you're going to have to become your own nutritionist uh, whether you avoid caffeine or not is really down to your own biochemistry um, Certainly uh, caffeine is a stimulant and certainly it can under certain circumstances disrupt sleep but there's no uh, reason why it should do if those circumstances change for example if you're, uh, if you're a regular caffeine consumer or you have a biochemistry that, uh, that, that is such that it doesn't really affect you in that, in that way. So I can't really come to a definitive answer on this video but I hope this has been helpful really uh, you're going to have to be your own detective on this and find out if it's uh, caffeine that's causing 
you uh, not to be able to sleep. I would suggest that of all the things uh, that do cause insomnia, caffeine is probably uh, not one of the things that is uh, most commonly prevalent uh, in people who have insomnia. Um, from my experience, it's usually stress uh, and either over-exercising or under-exercising that are usually the cause of, uh, of an inability to sleep. If you can uh, moderate your stress, identify the stresses in your life that are causing you to feel stress, if you can eliminate them or at least reduce them and you can perform moderate amounts of physical activity, in most people that is usually enough uh, to overcome uh, any insomnia that may be present. Uh, so I hope that video uh, was useful. Uh, if you have any comments on this, uh, on your own personal caffeine use, on things you found uh, that have been helpful for insomnia, uh, that's always useful for other people obviously reading the comments under these videos. Um, if you could like this video if you thought it was helpful. Um, if you want to subscribe to my channel obviously that would also be very useful as well um, and hopefully um, the, the advice that I give will uh, eventually um, be useful to you and improve your life in some way. Um, I will uh, see you next week for another video uh, and in the meantime take care.